Welcome to Salty Chefs Fishing. I'm Ryan Laurie. And I'm Michael O'Rourke. And here we got our first hook and cook. So yesterday we went out to Shark River, New Jersey. We took out some blood worms, some gulp, and a mess of chum that I had foraged from around uh, the southern Long Island. We were in about 8 to 14 feet of water, somewhere around there. Uh, slow going of it, definitely slow going on the day. This was the only bite we had, the only fish we caught. But I felt one hit, I set that hook as hard as humanly possible. <laughs> I almost pulled this little guy straight up from 14 feet. <laughs> but uh, we made it happen, we got him in the boat, we had a little trouble with the net. <laughs> it was the first trip and there's always going to be some hiccups, but we made it work. So we have a great dish prepared for you today. Beautiful. Yeah, we managed to christen uh, the salty Sioux on our, our really first uh, trip targeting fish and we got a beautiful winter flounder dish with spring ingredients because it is spring and that's when they're in season. Oxymoron, but we're gonna put together a beautiful dish, show you how to do it step by step and uh, can't wait to uh, show you the finished product. First step was getting chum. So I headed to the south shore of Long Island and found some blue mussels. Looking for these guys, you want to find tidal waters, moving currents that have structure for them to grow on. They're easy to get and they're delicious. You simply take a knife and trim behind the beard, cutting them off their structure. This would also be a good time to tell you the dish we prepared. It's a seared winter flounder with lightly roasted asparagus, tossed in a fine herb chimichurri with mashed potatoes oh, and a purple. Yeah, right here. Just let her go. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, <laughs> first fish of the season. Looks like Michael got the first uh, winter flounder keeper. We didn't have it on uh, video because it's been a pretty slow day, but that's a 13 inch winter flounder for you. Fucking A. <laughs> I was so excited. I, I must have had a little nibble and it hit yours. I know you said don't set the hook hard. Huh? You said. Fuck you, Ryan Lord. Said I'm, <laughs> said I'm gonna get it. So what I'm doing here is bleeding the fish. This is simply making a small slit in the gills to drain the blood. It'll keep your fillets super clean and extremely tasty. That was the secret. We had man lunch, beef jerky, and chewing tobacco. <laughs> the fish whistle calls him in. Yep. <laughs> A little man lunch. <laughs> and then the man lunch gets him. What, the beef with the lunch. 
<laughs> now let's get into some cooking. To fillet a flatfish, you start by making a straight cut at the top of the fillets. Next, follow the fish's center line, cut from head to tail. Then follow the backbone from head to tail, gently removing the flesh. Cut the fillet from the tail, then follow up the wing back to the head. Gently, with the tip of your knife, connect your cuts and continue the process three times. On a flatfish, you'll end up with four fillets, two large and two small. The meat on a fish is very delicate, so take your time. A sharp knife is a must. And for flatfish, one with a flexible blade is recommended for ease of getting between the ribs. You should hear a xylophone-like sound of the knife cruising just on the top of the ribs and a see-through carcass when done properly. And in the world of fine dining, we would throw the last filet for luck. Stunning. To skin a fish, simply hold the tail end of the filet with a paper towel. Cut down on the skin on an angle, but not through it. Angle your blade down and apply gentle backwards pressure with the hand holding the filet. Simply cut the meat off of the skin. Trim up any unwanted pieces and you are ready to go. Occasionally, even the pros cut through the skin. On a flatfish, simply take the wing side of the fish and remove the cartilage. Slice between the meat and the skin, removing it like so. Now we'll be showing you how to make a proper mashed potato. Step one, peel the potatoes. Then wash them, then place them in cold water. The wash is important to remove starch. When making mashed potatoes, starch is the enemy. We've all had gummy mashed potatoes before, and that occurs when there's too much starch. Equally as important is a generous seasoning of your water which will also help to remove starch. Next, take a pint of cream and a pound of butter and cook it over very low heat where you will have a very big mess if you're not paying attention. Rice the potatoes and then return to stove. Finally, fold in your butter and cream until velvety smooth.
until properly seasoned for your liking. This should be done for all food. And the final vegetable preparation will be asparagus. Peel the stalks to remove the fibrous skin. We will be blanching and lightly roasting the asparagus. To blanch, you need very salty, boiling water and an ice bath. Add your asparagus into the boiling water, making sure to not overcrowd. Watch for the color of the asparagus to turn a deep, dark green. Take them out and quickly shock them in the ice water. We will also be doing the same to scallion whites. We went rogue on this quote unquote chimichurri. It's actually not a chimichurri at all, but it was the idea behind the sauce. We took some lightly roasted shallots, chives, parsley, and tarragon with sherry vinegar and extra virgin olive oil in a food processor until it was a sauce consistency. Now to sear the fish. Season the top of the fillets with salt. Make sure your oil is hot. And place all of your fillets in a nonstick pan, being sure to not overcrowd. One more to go. So when you first get your fish in the pan, it's important to make sure that it is not stuck to the pan. Finish seasoning the back half of the fish. Ensure one more time that we are not stuck and let the fish sit. The most important thing to a good seared fish is not touching it letting it create the sear with the heat and the oil. We added some thyme, some butter, basted that over the back of the fillets, and that's all she wrote. A beautiful seared winter flounder. Since we made such a nice herb butter in the pan, we will take the asparagus, and the scallions that we blanched and go right into the same pan in the herb oil. A light roast on the asparagus and a little more color on the scallions. And the final step is to create our Burblanc sauce. A Burblanc sauce is a very French sauce consisting of butter, white wine vinegar, and shallots. Saute your shallots until they are translucent. Season with salt. Once the shallots are translucent, deglaze the pan with white wine vinegar. If your stove has a hood with a fan, this would be a great time to crank that on high. Allow the shallots and the white wine to reduce down about 90%, leaving almost a syrup-like consistency in the pan. This will concentrate all of the flavors of the vinegar. Once we have reached what is known as sec or demi-sec, meaning dry or almost dry, we will add butter, constantly stirring to emulsify the butter into the vinegar. 
If your fat and liquid start to separate, this is known as breaking. It is important to add a very small amount of liquid and vigorously stir back to emulsification. Once you have added all of your butter, season with salt. Some quick foraging. And now, time to plate up. We tossed our asparagus and our scallions in the fiend herb chimichurri we created. making sure to get a thick, liberal coating on all of the vegetables. Most of the time in plating, the protein is the base of the dish. So it will go on the plate first. It's important to note, this can be done in any form or fashion. We decided to go for a bit of a more refined plate up. Then the vegetables will be filled in to add pop color to create pattern. We would usually use odd numbers to bring the eye to a focal point. For purees, we would commonly use a technique called a quenelle, which has three sides and comes to a straight line at the top. It's formed by the back of the spoon and the scoop on the side of the spoon. A couple of spoonfuls of beurre blanc over the fish. Upland crust and chickweed from around the house are the final touches and a quick wipe down. Thank you for watching. The recipe for the dish is posted below. Please follow, like, and subscribe to Salty Chef's Fishing and tune back in for more recipes.